Thanks again for having me up here. So what I'm here to talk about is writing to advance your Wi-Fi career, or actually it could be writing to advance really any career. Um, but we're in the Wi-Fi industry, um, or it could be in the networking industry. So when I say writing to advance your Wi-Fi career, in my mind it could really be a lot of different things. Um, there's my Twitter address. I told this joke in Prague. I have about 4,000 Twitter followers. Keith Parsons has about 14,000, so he literally is the Kim Kardashian on, of Wi-Fi on Twitter. <laughs> um, so the, the main topic of this blog, of, excuse me, of this uh, presentation is going to be these three main bullet points right here: is use writing uh, as a way to basically do three things: boost your career, expand your knowledge. Okay, boost your Wi-Fi knowledge, advance your wireless LAN career, and the third one is uh, just as important as the first two, and in my mind, in a lot of ways, it's more important, and that is sharing the knowledge. So I'm going to focus on these three things, and then towards the end of the presentation, I'm also going to give you a few little writing tips. Okay, so I wrote a book, um, and let me just tell you the story of how I got started writing. Okay, so the way I got started writing was literally 20 years ago. I don't even remember who it was, but somebody told me uh, th that worked for Cisco, if you wanted to move up in that organization, you had uh, to write a white paper at Cisco. So I was self-employed for about 10 years before I went to work for a vendor, and I just started writing Wi-Fi white papers. And this is in the early days of Wi-Fi, and then I just released them publicly to the internet. And uh, then my name got out there a little bit, and then a couple of companies reached out to me and asked them if I would co-write a white paper with them as an independent third party. I did it for Fluke Networks, and I also did it for Cognio. Then I got approached by a publisher to write a competitive CWNA book um, to the existing one um, for the CWNP uh, program. And I got approached by Cybex, and uh, I didn't have enough time to do it by myself, so I called up my co-author, Dave Westcott, and the rest is history. Didn't have a clue to what we were doing, okay? We just started writing. And it, it was, without a doubt, the best thing I ever did for my career. Um, there's the book. Um, I just want to say how grateful we are um, for a lot of different reasons that people use this as their study guide for this uh, wonderful certification. We're very humbled, too, by the fact that um, universities and colleges all over the world use this book as uh, a curriculum for their wireless classes. Um, and we're also uh, very humbled by the fact, and this is probably the most humbling thing of all, is that I, we found out that 80, probably about 80% of the people that buy the book buy it more as a reference guide as opposed to just a study guide. Um, now, um, so once again, I, I'll just say for Westcott as well, my co-author, we're very, very humbled by it. Okay. Uh, once again, this has died on me, so I will do this. Pardon me. Okay. All right, so uh, we do have a tradition here. Every year we have a picture made with these four characters right here. And we have another tradition as well, and that is we troll my co-author because he never shows up to these events. So um, if anybody wants to troll him very quickly, and maybe if he would come to one of these conventions, he'd win an award. Now, um, <laughs> Um, it has been a personal journey. I've written a lot of, co-authored a lot of books, written a bunch of books on my own as well, countless white papers, and I can't remember how many blog entries. So, uh, you know, just get started. You know, buy a typewriter, if they're, you know, do they even make typewriters anymore? But just start writing, okay? You don't have to be Mark Twain. You don't have to be Stephen King. Just start writing. And we're going to talk more about blogs, but I can tell you right now that um, some of the best blogs out there, they're not, you know, these guys aren't classical writers. These are just people that have taken things from their notes from when they were studying for, uh, or applying for CWNE and uh, took some of their notes from when they were on their job, and then they just took it and they put it in a blog format. Now, we will talk more about blogs, but that's the easiest way to get started. But there's a lot of different mediums on where you can write. You could write for magazines, you can write white papers, you can try to write a book, okay? Um, it, although it's hard and takes time, but a blog is the easiest way, and of course, there's white papers. Now, this will absolutely boost your career. 
Uh, there's no, no, no question about this. Um, you're not going to get rich if you decide to write a book. Um, I make one dollar per book. Now it sells, that book sells about five to eight thousand copies a year. And we're, uh, so it pays for a nice vacation. But I only know of two authors that actually write technical books that actually make a living off of it. One's Todd Lamley, he works for my publisher, he does a lot of writing for my publisher. He's made a fortune writing Cisco books. And another one's Mike Myers, who's actually, I sat in a, a wireless class with once. He writes all the CompTIA books and he also makes a fortune. But they, they got these marketing wings of Cisco and CompTIA behind both of them and so that's why they make a lot of money and they've been able to make a career. Um, but you know what? So. The one dollar a book that I make, if you divide it by the amount of time that I put into it, it's burger flipping wages. That being said, I have made a fortune personally um, from the book because it has opened up so many opportunities for me. Well before I even went to work for a vendor, well, when I was self-employed, it became my business card. I'm also a big believer in tasteful self-promotion. And if you write, whether it's a book or even a blog, it will get your name out there and build your brand and help build your own persona. Um, I think Andrew Von Nagy already left. Um, he doesn't blog anymore, but he used to at the time have the best blog out there many, many years ago. So about 15 years ago, this 15-year-old kid was blogging about um, Wi-Fi, or at least he looked like he was 15. He was in his 20s. Um, and everybody wanted to know, know, who is this guy? And of course now everybody knows Andrew and he's made quite the career of himself. So um, blogging is a great way to get your name out there. Writing in general will do wonders for your career. It will boost your knowledge. Now, why will it boost your knowledge? Because it makes you think. So if you get down and you actually just start writing, it actually makes you think better um, and, and helps you learn too. If I, every week for my own job, I write down things that I've done during the week and have to do next week and review it because it makes me think. Now I'm gonna talk about some other mediums towards the end of this presentation like podcasting and videos and those are great too, but they're not quite the same as writing because if you write, you are personally sitting down and having to think and you will learn uh, f from that process. Not only are you helping others learn, but you're teaching yourself. This is important. Share the knowledge. And so that's a quote from one of the founding fathers of the United States, Benjamin Franklin, about karma is a real thing. Not only has it boosted my career and my co-author's career, and, um, but by sharing the knowledge, trust me, um, pass it along. It's a good thing. Probably the thing I'm most grateful of all about, and this happens to me in Westcott all the time, uh, people come up to us and they say, David, thank you, um, I read your book, and because I read your book, uh, I changed my career. Or uh, because I read your book and got started in Wi-Fi, I'm now making $50,000 more a year. And um, you know, so believe me, don't get me wrong, I, I'm, I'm in it for the money as well, okay? But uh, that has been so humbling and so gratifying. And if you do the same thing, if you share that knowledge and you pass it along, I promise it to you that good karma will come your way. Writing's easy, right? Okay, I'm gonna be a little honest here. I get writer's block sometimes. Sometimes I just can't, uh, I just can't, I just get caught. So like right now I have to write another uh, dummies type booklet for Extreme Networks and they're really pissed off at me right now because I, I'm way past deadline and I gotta get started back up. And so the way I got, um, I'm getting started back up, I just went and knocked out five blogs in a row in the last week and a half. They've all been published and I, I got the juices flowing again. So if you just, uh, you, know, you know, just sit down, start writing. If you, get, if you get stuck, just do it again. The way I've always overcome uh, writer's block is I just force myself to sit down, turn off the email, turn off Twitter, and just start writing, okay? And once again, I don't expect everybody here to be er Ernest Hemingway or, or Mark Twain because um, a lot of times, uh, you know, once again, if you're just blogging, it can just be uh, very, um, <clears throat> not near as structured. Um, now, speaking of blogs, here's two that I really like, okay? Um, 
uh, one, to hear Lee's honest perspective of things. Nigel uh, also has a really great blog in terms of technical. There's a lot of other bloggers out here, so my apologies if I didn't put you up here on the screen. A quick show of hands. How many people have actually read a Wi-Fi blog? I bet it's just about everybody. Okay, that's good to know. How many people have written one? Okay, next year, why don't we like double that? Let's double, double that. And let me give you a little secret about writing a blog. Short is good. Long blogs are bad. Okay, just make them short and to the point. Now, if you have a long, if you have a long technical subject that you can't get into like four or five paragraphs, make it a series of blogs. Make it multiple blog entries. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, um, once again, blogging is a great way, and uh, anybody, can, anybody can do it, okay? It's a little bit more free form than writing a book, but um, that's kind of the point of blogging, that it's more free form. Uh, Twitter, it's only 280 characters, but it's still writing, okay? Now, um, believe it or not, um, we, well, I think you guys know this, we have a very active Twitter community here. Um, and that's good. For those of you who aren't, you should. How many people here sh have learned, so, show of hands again, how many people here have learned something from somebody else in this room via Twitter? Fantastic. Okay, 280 characters. And very often it's pointing you to, to a resource that you will go on and then investigate later on. Um, but sometimes in those you know, couple sentences there, I actually learned something. So it's a great resource. I, I try to scan Twitter at least once a day, even if it's just for five, 10 minutes, okay? Um, now, let's talk about a few more things. If you're writing, whether it's a blog, a white paper, a book, or whatever, uh, having a second set of eyes is always a good idea, okay? So I do, uh, I encourage, and a lot of people at Extreme to do writing as well. And so I offer my services to do tech editing for them. They usually end up regretting it um, because I put a lot of red marks on it. But um, it's, I, I, you, having a second set of eyes is always a good thing. When I write a book, when Westcott and I write a book, it goes through literally um, about that many sets of eyes. It goes through four different editors, okay? Uh, ones, and a lot of them uh, that find a lot of the grammar mistakes, uh, we also have a tech edi editors. By the way, I've had some wonderful tech editors over the years for the book. Um, ben Wilson, who works for Fortinet. Um, uh, Andrew Vonage, Marcus Burton um, have been tech editors. Uh, and having that second uh, set of eyes, it's not just for technical uh, accuracies, but it's also just to get, sometimes for, it will help you just become a better writer. Trust me, the Cybex editors make me sound better, okay? Um, and they point out, and you know, sometimes it's a challenge too, because on the flip side, sometimes uh, an editor doesn't understand a technical term, and then they start editing it, and then they're like, the, when they edit it, then the sentence doesn't make any sense. So sometimes, um, if you're actual, when you're a writer, you still have final say. Uh, but having a second set of eyes is always helpful, and also collaboration is a good thing. So co-writing something. You know, Westcott and I, we've been writing with, uh, books with each other, and for somehow our styles just mesh. Um, I would discourage people from trying to have like eight people write, okay? Um, but uh, one or two, or two or three, that's fine. And at the very least, have somebody give it a second look. There are other mediums, okay, like videos. And a, a lot of, my company does a lot of videos, I've done a lot of videos. I don't think it's as good as writing, okay? But it is another way to get your message out there. So, and, and build your brand, and also learn and share the knowledge. By the way, if you don't know who that is, that's Chris Harkins. Uh, he worked with me uh, for a long time as a, a long time friend and coworker. Uh, Chris passed away last October after a really uh, brave battle with uh, prostate cancer, so I ask that you uh, have a, a word for him in your prayers tonight. Um, podcast. Podcasts are a wonderful thing here too. I've actually been on every one of these at some times. Once again, I still prefer uh, uh, the writing medium, but this is another way. A lot of you tech geeks like to listen to podcasts in your car, okay? 
Um, this gentleman right here, I remember we had a conversation about 13 years ago, um, and he was like going, David, I, I need to get my name out like your book. And I'm thinking about doing this podcast. I'm like, Keith, I thought everybody already knew who you were. And, um, but you know what? He uh, went ahead and he did those podcasts, and they were fantastic. He was one of the first podcasters out there. They were fantastic. And of course, now what do we have? We have this big convention, so uh, everybody give Keith a big hand real quick. <laughs> All right. So... We, writing is good for boosting your knowledge, it's good for your career, and don't forget to share the knowledge, okay? Because it's good for your karma. Now let's talk about some Grammar 101. I bet you didn't know we were gonna do this. Now I was not very good in, in high school, uh, in grammar especially, um, but I'm gonna, and we're not gonna go over all kinds of uh, grammar rules, but I'm gonna point out four or five that will help you be a better writer, okay? Here's a big one, and everybody's guilty of, including me. Wordiness. Um, uh, avoid wordiness. People have a tendency to write out sentences that are way, way too long. The goal is to be clear. So here's a bad example. Fast BSS transition, as well as other fast secure roaming mechanisms, are becoming so much more commonplace. That would sound better if it said fast BSS transition and other fast secure roaming mechanisms are becoming more commonplace, but simply by getting rid of four or five words. Now this isn't that much of a difference, but what you really start seeing is people doing long stringy sentences and compound sentences. Shorter and less is better. I learned that from a, uh, a Robert, a guy I work with who's a technical writer at uh, Extreme Networks. Shorter is better, okay? <laughs> you got it! <laughs> All right. Here's another one I'm always guilty of. Um, use present tense, okay? So changes in tense uh, will ch uh, distort the meaning of what you're writing about. So for example, uh, this is not a good way to put it. When you click OK, Extreme Cloud IQ will generate a report. It's better to say, when you click OK, Extreme Cloud IQ generates a report, okay? As a matter of fact, almost anything rendered in future tense can be rendered in present tense in most languages. Uh, present tense can also be used to uh, indicate a future action like I'm working here tomorrow, okay? So I'm, I'm guilty of this. Um, I always find myself mixing tense and I have to correct myself, okay? Um, here's another one, and being in the technical industry, I can promise you everybody's really bad with this. Don't overuse acronyms and spell them out frequently. By the way, that's the same thing when you're speaking. People forget that they just assume that you know, you, you assume that everybody knows what that acronym is. Um, you have to spell out. My, even my own publisher, they have this policy, this style sheet that says, oh, you just spell it out once and then you use the acronym through the rest of the book wrong, because if I did that, this is what the book would look like. A VHD AP uses MIMO diversity, blah, 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 blah. You know, I mean, who, who can make any sense of that? So spelling out acronyms is important. Um, don't always assume that people know what that acronym means, okay? Yes, it is actually. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Punctuation, comma saves lives. <laughs> okay, so um, that's another thing too uh, that uh, editors have taught me that there is uh, punctuation matters and people don't use commas properly and need to use them more often or sometimes don't use them, uh, okay? Um, so uh, punctuation is important. And now I'm gonna tell you about some other grammar and writing things that just irritate, irritate me and make me, turn me into a mad panda, okay? Why does everyone think you need to capitalize every other word, okay? 
go look at any wireless LAN or technical vendor uh, website or white paper. It seems like every other word is capitalized. And, uh, you know, uh, capitalizing everything is, uh, is almost, it's like shouting. Okay? So don't overcapitalize. That's uh, something you should not do. Here's another one, too. Why does everyone think you need to bold every other word for emphasis? It's okay to bold a word every now and then, but in most cases, in a, uh, maybe in a free-form writing style every now and then, but don't bold everything. And here is my biggest all-time writing, technical writing pet peeve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, little x means an amendment, big x means a standard. 802.1x is a port-based access control standard. It, you know, it's just one of these things that drives me crazy when I see 8021 little x. And, and by the way, almost every vendor gets it wrong in their white papers too sometimes too. So just, I know it's being picky, but it's just one of those things that just irritates me. Um, so I mentioned there's value in a second set of eyes and having even a tech editor or somebody to do um, you know, editing in terms of you know, writing style. Um, well. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert on writing style, so let me tell you a tool that I use not for my books, but for my blogs. This right here, Grammarly. I love this. I've been using it the past year now uh, for my blogs. It's a service, it's cheap. Um, there's a free version and a paid version, and you write something out, and unlike your traditional spell check and grammar checks that are in Microsoft Word, it's much better. It uses machine learning and AI. Um, to, um, and you, um, you can actually choose different kind of styles and you just upload it in and then it just starts making suggestions and you choose whether or not to edit it. Wonderful tool, especially if you're doing blogging, okay? Um, and it's fast, quick, and easy, and cheap, and affordable. Um, I'm a big believer in visual learning as well. Um, the human brain uh, learns like better, 90% of the time it learns better than if it's reading words. Now, uh, I know, um, so what I mean by that is I'm a big believer in including graphics and screenshots and diagrams and figures along with your writing. So if you read my books or if you read any of my blogs, you will see all those things because it helps reinforce the words that you're writing as well. So a picture is definitely uh, worth a thousand, a thousand words. So a, a lot of what you guys do is just simple screenshots especially from on a technical side of things. That's a simple thing to do. But what if you're trying to make your own diagram and figure or whiteboarding kind of thing? Um, let me tell you what I do. What I do is I mock it up in PowerPoint, okay? And uh, when I mock up uh, something that I want uh, turn it into a graphic of some sort, um, I then turn it into my publisher, and they have illustrators that then turn it into a picture. Now, you may not have the... Um, access to um, illustrators uh, or a publisher, but have you ever heard of Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R? You can, if you really want to get uh, some good diagrams, draw something up conceptually and you'll find somebody that'll do it for five bucks, okay? Um, so that, that's a service that I've used for various things in the past. And let me give you the number one lesson that I've learned. And the number one lesson I've learned is this, repurpose content. I wish I could go, go back 20 years and tell my, per, myself that 20 years ago. Um, I repurpose content all the time. I've heard both Sam and Keith talk about this in the past, about how you, you, you look up something on the internet and then you find out that you blogged about it, you know? Uh, there's, that is so true. But for my own work, too, I, I can't tell you how many times I have to do something for work and write something. I'm like, wait a minute, I've already done something. And I can take things from my book and from my past blogs and white papers and repurpose them into PowerPoints or whatever else. Don't waste time redoing things that you've already done before. It saves you loads of time. And I wish I could have learned that 20 years ago. Here's a few, um, um, I've got a few seconds left. So um, to wrap this up, here's a few uh, other writing resources. Thesaurus.com 
Cinnamons are your friend. Uh, Grammarly, I talked about Fiverr. If you really want to get into grammar, there's a, a nice little book that you can buy on Amazon for about eight bucks, okay? Um, and uh, one last shameless plug, there's the uh, free copy of your Wi-Fi 6 for Dummies booklets. And I'll end you with this. Once again, what I started with is writing is great for your career. It'll help you boost your knowledge. And most importantly, share the knowledge. Thanks very much. <laughs>